Why has cholera remained a recurring decimal in the country with its attendant effects such as loss of lives? What are the preventive measures and how is the national response activities for cholera going? These are the issues we shall be discussing on this week's episode of Health Options. Thanks for joining us on the program. I am Rabi Abdullah. This is Health Options and we have Dr. Hassan Montari, Assistant Director and Head of Events based Surveillance at the NCDC to discuss the current outbreak of cholera in parts of the country. We know cholera is a bacterial infection. Uh, it is usually acquired through fecal oral, oral roots, either through contaminated water or food. Um, so why is it important? It's because as your question says, uh, why do we keep on having cholera in Nigeria? For example, in Nigeria, we are cholera endemic uh, already. So um, we keep on having cholera in Nigeria because we have a lot of issues that we need to tackle before cholera disappears. For example, um, we have to have proper sanitation. Um, what I mean by proper sanitation is how we dispose of waste, irrespective of which type of waste. But more specifically, is issue of uh, you know open defecation. Um, uh, you, you are aware that uh, we are trying to achieve uh, open defecation free in Nigeria by 2030. But where are we now? Uh, so we are far from there. Um, Probably we have only about 61 local governments now that are often education free in the whole of 774 local governments. So what I'm trying to point out is that we have a lot of open education in Nigeria and all these uh, uh, communities, most of them, uh, you will see that there's this problem of open education where this cholera exists. Um, apart from that, we also have poor you know, waste disposal. Uh, apparatus or culture, let me put it that way. So you will see that a lot of places you have uh, uh, a lot of, you know, waste just behind the backyard, you understand, and then maybe along the river, you understand, and then some uh, houses, actually, you will see that they don't even have toilets. Uh, I was opportunity to visit a place and then we see that there are a lot of excreta just coming out of the house into the channel that leads to the river, where that place uh, they wash, you know, vegetables and carrot and then sell. And then some, definitely some people use it for cooking and all that. And it contaminates most of the boreholes around the area. We had to close the borehole. So uh, in as much as the conditions for uh, cholera to surface or to appear or to affect people, but if, you know, is there, we will definitely continue to have uh, cholera in Nigeria and even in Africa uh, in general. You know, cholera usually appears in most cases in some urban slums, you know, or some slums, even the or rural area where, you know, there is congestion and then you don't have proper sanitary measures, for example. And then you have limited, you know, toilet facilities with a lot of, like, for example, in an IDP camp or in a refugee camp. The response, it covers many people and many organizations. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, for example, NCDC partners with uh, MPC, the Federal Ministry of Health, Federal Ministry of Environment, Federal Ministry of Water Resources, you know, and other partners like WHO, uh, UNICEF, all these partners, we coordinate the response. Now, having said that, we have developed an IAP, Incident Action Plan, for cholera, which all these components are part of it. And our teams at the NCDC, they have been deployed to states that have high burden. For example, uh, Bauchi, uh, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Plateau, and I probably even Benue State. Uh, so we are there, 
we're helping the states because the states are the ones to guide, I mean, to lead in this response. We are there to support technically and probably with commodities. And all the states we were able to give them, you know, commodities like IV fluids, you know, uh, all the results like RDTs, rapid diagnostic tests, you understand? And then, of course, the risk communication, as you mentioned, is part of the, uh, the, the, the pillars of the response. So most of these states have developed their incident action plan for cholera. We have 17 states plus FCT. Can That's 18. Yes. So that uh, reported cases, you understand, suspected cases. Uh, of course, some of them were confirmed. Um, you know, cholera is when you, when you get a ca cases of cholera, confirmed cases of cholera in a particular community. You understand what I'm saying? So if you continue to have people with diarrhea and vomiting, once they fit the case definition, the suspected case definition, they are cholera cases. Do you understand? It's not all cholera cases that you must test, unless with RGT, this rapid diagnostic test. So um, we have 17 states plus FCT now that are reporting cholera with over 15,000 cases. Yes, yeah, so um, total number of deaths, over 300. Yes, when you talk about 17,512 cases, as at, uh, you know, every day, keep on updating, mm -hmm. but as at the last situation uh, report, and then you have over 380 deaths, all, uh, you know, in Nigeria. Across. Yeah, caught across, mm -hmm. exactly. So, and as I told you, um, some states have uh, confirmed cases, understand? So anywhere that you declare an outbreak, there must be a confirmed case, understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, many states, once there are cases that are confirmed cases, we have stretcher reports from states, and uh, we notice that there's an increasing number of cases within the last, say, two to four weeks, you understand? So EOC was activated, uh, with partnership of uh, the stakeholders, and we make sure that we quickly develop an instant action plan for the na national, what we are going to do in the NCDC. And then we go out, those states that I mentioned, uh, NCDC deployed a team that is called Rapid Response Team to all those states that I mentioned to you. And we follow the, we act, we, we you know, uh, supported the states to develop their own instant action plan so that they will follow it even if we are not there. They will be able to implement those activities. So that is in coordination. And then in surveillance, when we went to states, we usually uh, support them to find those cases because the problem we have is uh, very few cases are reported, are being reported. The WHO says five to 10 cases of cholera are the only ones being reported. Do you understand what I mean? When you have 100 uh, cases, probably it's only 10 that officially are reported. So that's what, so many of these patients might be there, but with risk communication activities and then with guidance and technical support, many states are reporting. That's why initially you see a few states, but now you see a lot of states are reporting, are reporting these cases because once you get the case definition of cholera, then you, once you have somebody who is above two years and then he's having diarrhea, you know, profuse diarrhea, uh, and maybe severe dehydration, or he died from the diarrhea, then it's, it's a specific case of cholera. It's established. It's difficult to get everyone vaccinated because, one, there is a cost implication. You know, two, the support, those people supporting probably the, the vaccine, you know, they have to speak. For example, we have, we have a vaccine plan. I wanted to give you a, a, a small story. Um, as I said, in 2017, there are follow-up government in Borno State that were, you know, that's piloted in terms of vaccine, vaccination of oral cholera vaccine, oral cholera vaccine. Then it was extended to some states, you know. So from 2012 to 2017, you know, assessment was done on hotspots and what really, what is the really trend of cholera data. And then a vaccine plan was developed. You understand? So uh, it is expensive. You understand what I'm saying? And most of most countries, developed countries, they don't even experience cholera. You understand what I'm saying? So, but we have presented this plan. Uh, the government is willing 
to, you know, vaccine is a prerogative of National Frontline Development Agency, it's not LCDC. Yeah. So just like COVID-19 vaccine. So we have, this is our suggestion and the government is doing its best to see that it gets this, but our partners have agreed to start vaccination. At least this cholera, this uh, uh, outbreak, present outbreak in Bochi, which I believe soon it will start. So vaccination is also good that it can control prevention. I mean, it can control cholera outbreak, which is not the sole thing that we depend on. You have to add with the wash, you know, uh, components. You, yes, that is the most important thing. You have to have, as I said earlier, water, put water, sanitation, you know, and hygiene. We cannot discuss cholera without touching on the environmental factors influencing the epidemic. So let's now join the Registrar of the Environmental Health Officers Registration Council of Nigeria for issues around environmental sanitation, food hygiene, and the environmental component of the response to the current outbreak in parts of the country. Basically, uh, you know, cholera is uh, one of the diseases that is waterborne, and it has direct link with poor environment. In the so-called developed nations, most at times they, uh, they have addressed the issue of basic sanitation and hygiene, and that's why cholera is becoming history in such places. Nigeria, as we speak today, about 100 million people don't have access to basic sanitation facility, and about 86 million don't even have access to potable water. And why it is very important for the government at all levels to really address the issue of providing a strong public health measures to, pro to uh, prevent the populace against this disease that occurs. I would like to also uh, mention, as a nation, we need to strengthen the public health measures. And we know the environmental health officers are key in driving the process of sanitation and hygiene. Why we are lacking in Nigeria, one, is we are not investing in the sanitation infrastructure. And if we are not investing in sanitation infrastructure, cholera will keep on occurring. Let me give you a typical example. When you go to the block nations, it is a criteria after at least 500 meters, you must provide a toilet facility where people will answer the call of nature. Because if you don't provide such facility, you have given room for open defecation. And fundification is the major cause of cholera outbreak. The rich man is affected. The poor man is affected. The scenario is this. Once there is open defecation, people defecate. And we know immediately rain set in. The run water will wash the feces into the river and bodies of water. And what is our water sources? The communities, the local communities, depend on these streams and bodies of water and sources of water. And this water is already contaminated. And that's why I say even the rich is affected. You may be sitting at or staying at Maitama, for example, and you sent your wife to the market to buy fruits and other vegetables for her to come and cook food for you. What is the source of that vegetable? It's still coming from the same uh, river source because they are using the water to do the irrigation. And if the fruits or the vegetables are not washed thoroughly, there is that tendency you to get in cholera. So the solution is one. The federal government under the president has done a lot of uh, provision of policy and guidelines and also there is a lot of investment by the federal government. Let's take, for example, when you look at the MTSS of the Environmental Health Officers Registration Council, 
we have provided about nine billion that will be assessed by two public-private partnership. Why are we doing this? It's because we need to invest in the infrastructure for hygiene and sanitation. One of it is building toilet facility. It may amaze you to know that there is a criteria, even NTA as an organization, did the environmental health officer come and assess the toilet facility based on the ratio of staff? Likewise, when you go to public places, somebody must answer the call of nature. And if there is no provision for toilet, such person will look at the short pathway because he must answer that call. So what are we saying? The government, at the local government, which have the constitutional responsibility to provide this toilet infrastructure, must sit up and also recruit enough environmental health officers to enforce the legislation and laws at the local level. The president has, order, uh, has issued order number nine that targets the um, achievement of Nigeria open defecation by 2025. How reality is the declaration? That's why I said there must be also interministerial collaboration because the Ministry of Environment cannot achieve it alone. And that's why you see there is a lot of interface between the Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Health, and Ministry of Water Resources. And but the problem is the state are not buying in, and also the local government are not buying in. So I want to call on the government at the states and also at the local government to see the possibility of integrating with the national policy so that we can be able to achieve the order that the president has issued. And let me also tell you, there is a lot of job opportunities. If you look at the sanitation investment, the open defecation itself, it will take more than 10,000 Nigerian youth out of poverty because it will create job opportunity for them. Just imagine if you construct a public toilet, for example, in Jose Market. Do you know the return of investment? And also, it's a win-win situation whereby the feces itself, there is technology now that can be converted into solar. You take it to the farm as fertilizer. So what we are calling, the private sector, the government at all levels should come and consolidate the gains and see how we can build and invest in providing sanitation infrastructure. And that's the only solution that we can be able to prevent cholera from occurring. The there is no any magic because you cannot give vaccination for cholera. Because you know, cholera is fecal oral. And once there is open defecation, cholera will continue to emerge as endemic and also with the highest level of mortality in Nigeria. So the integration should be also consolidated. And I'm happy the Honorable Minister of Environment is very serious and very keen in seeing the integration of these three basic ministries. The water resources mandate is to provide portable water. Then the health was also look at the possibilities of making the health factor to make prevent cholera. Well, the environment sector is very clear. And as we speak Ma, today, and that's why even the NCDC is constrained, because there is no any public health laboratory that analyzes environmental media. These environmental media are for water, soil, food, and air. And if you don't have such laboratory, if I could recall, the olden days sanitary inspectors used to go to water points, select water points, and take water for analysis. Graciously, I want to say the Honorable Minister has directed and we are working to establish a reference public health laboratory in Ministry of Health because of this endemic, uh, endemic. And also the Ministry is working tirelessly to see this for the establishment of at least one environmental and public health lab within the region so that we can be able to be analyzing the environmental media. Government cannot do it alone. So we need as a community also to come together and see where 
we don't have enough toilet facility. The community should come together and build toilet facility for themselves. The government at the federal level is doing what it requires. The policies are there, the guidelines are there, the necessary legislation also are available. So the local government is the one that has the responsibility of recruiting these environmental health officers to enforce this legislation house to house. With the challenge, like what I told you, the environmental health officers are not adequate at the local government because the WHO ratio says one officer to 8,000 population. It may amaze you to know that when you go to some local government, you find only five environmental health officers. And even the five, they don't have the necessary logistics to move around. Currently, the Honorable Minister, through the, our emergency alert system, has activated the environmental health emergency volunteer to go to the communities and educate the communities on the implication of their action. And also, you know, as preventive health, also some of the sanitation and hygiene measures that they can be able to adapt, to be able to prevent themselves and also their children. For example, basic uh, hygiene measures. Women should wash their hand after visiting toilet, after also changing napkin for their children because they are responsible for the preparation of food in the community. And if they didn't take measures, there is going to be reinfection and also increase, yes, increase in the rate of also the incidence rates of the disease. So our 6,000 volunteers are already at alert and they have gone to the community trying to also change the attitude and also do intensive health education and health promotion. Because before we health educate, but now we are also promoting the health of the community. My call is one to the private sector. Yes, to the private sector first, that they should come and invest in providing toilet facility. Also, we are calling the environmental health officers across the nation to intensify their surveillance and also their health education and promotion in the communities and also calling on the water works. When there is an outbreak, what is required is the water works to increase the level of the chlorine in the distribution channel so that at least we safeguard the purity of the water that is being transmitted to the community. That does it of this week's episode of Health Options. You can go to our YouTube channel to watch the upload of these and other episodes of the program. Email us for your comments and contributions at healthoptions at nta.gov.ng. Remember to avoid open defecation. Prioritize hygiene in order to stay safe from diseases. I remain yours, Rabi Abdullah. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Thank <music> you.